Well, today we've dedicated Harpa, we've committed her to God, and what does that mean? What do we think that committing her to God means? Is it some kind of special protection? What do we actually think dedication means? And uh, well, we would hope in doing that that someday that uh, Harpa would make a, a faith claim for herself, that she would believe that Jesus is Lord, her Saviour, and want to serve Him the rest of her days. Um, you know, when we have children, uh, there are times when we need babysitters, right? You know, and uh, we just don't take it for granted um, that they're of good character, do we? No, we, we check their references, we talk to people that they've already sat for, right? We want to know who we're letting take our children. And it's the same with God. We need to know when we're offering our children to God what that means. Is that a good thing? What is that? Um, so let's take a look at the character of God through Jesus and uh, Jesus' own dedication and what that means. Now, we've got a little chart up there we should have. I haven't got my pencil. Anyway, you can see there Jesus is born. Eight days later, he's named and circumcised. Ouch! And then he's dedicated in the temple 40 days after his birth. And, um, and, and that was um, a dedication for him, but it was also a purification ceremony for Mary after having a child. So we're in Luke chapter 2, verse 21. Jesus is presented at the temple there. So this is 40 days after his um, Yeah. Uh, it's not 40 days. So. Later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, and the name given to him by the angel before he was even um, conceived. But why did God specify eight days? Because on the eighth day, the amount of prothombin uh, present in, is elevated in, in, in the blood level uh, to over a hundred percent more than it is normal for a God, and um, it's the only day in a male's life when that happens on the eighth day. And if surgery is to be performed on the eighth day, that's the perfect day to do it because vitamin K and this prothombin levels are at their peaks. And they're clotting agents, which is what you need after you've been circumcised. And uh, on the eighth day, it rises to that level and then drops off to about half of that um, for the rest of a man's life. Um, and uh, there's a chart here published by Macmillan MD in his book called None of These Diseases. Um, so you can see the graph, oh you can't see the graph. <laughs> well, available for thumb, that's where it goes, right up to the top, it's 110% um, on the eighth day. Um, the rest of his life, it's around about 45%. Um, so isn't God good? He even thinks about the man being circumcised <laughs> The boy being circumcised. Um, just amazing. Verse 22 goes on to say, and Then it was time for their purification offering, as required by the law of Moses, after the birth of the child. So this is the 40th day. And his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Verse 25, um, we're told that while Joseph and Mary went to the temple, now please look up the temple on the internet. Um, if you know, it would have been one of the incredible wonders of the world. I was just amazed. I had never actually, I'd seen drawings of it, but you can see animations of it now and walk. So it is massive, absolutely massive. Um, and uh, it would have been, if, um, you know, going there for the first time as a young child would have been so impressive. Um, yeah, so um, this man, a man named Simeon, found them. And there was a man, Simeon, in Jerusalem, whose name was um, Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Um, so Luke 2.25. And he's, expecting to, um, he's been expecting the Messiah. And, you know, we can ask ourselves that. Are we expecting the Messiah? Are we expecting Jesus to come? He was full of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told him that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah, the Lord's Christ. And uh, 
See, God loves Simeon and, and He loves you. This is the message today that God loves us and cares for us in so many different ways. You know, some people, he was just waiting for a message from God. He was waiting to hear that his Messiah was coming. And God said, you will not die until you see that. See, our God is a promise maker and he's a promise keeper. So you have to believe that God promises you before you believe that he'll keep the promise. And, uh, and he answers prayer. Simeon is another example of how, how God loves and cares for us. Um, God answers prayers. He answered your prayers yesterday, maybe. He'll answer prayers today and he'll answer prayers tomorrow. He, he's a great provider. He wants to pour out blessings upon us. You know, more than the blessings of a scratchy, more than the blessings of a tax lotto ticket, as marvellous as that might seem, you know, 20 million bucks, what would you do with it? It wouldn't matter if at the end of the life you don't know Jesus Christ and you go to hell. It would not matter. See, he's wanting to bless you with eternal life. His blessings are from his heart to your heart, to your heart, to your heart. His blessings are to my heart. And as you know, we're talking about family, the fam our family, the family of God, you see the blessings come through your family when your heart is connected to God. And so Simeon was blown away by this, that the Messiah had actually came before he died. So he came to the temple not because he thought it was a good idea to visit that day, but because he was led by the Holy Spirit. And we all need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and he came in the spirit into the temple. And when his, when the parents brought the child Jesus um, to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now you, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles. That's us. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Um, Jesus came to uh, reveal God to every non-Jew. For, for the glory of your people Israel. And now that's being uh, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. And the question today is, would you like to be led, um, would you like to be that sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to be led by Him? You know, notice that Simeon was um, dis, uh, described as being a righteous and devout man. He was looking for the Messiah. See, are you righteous? You can be in Jesus. There's nothing holding you back. You're in righteous means right standing. And when we say you need to come in confession and repentance, confession just means agreeing with God. We have to agree with God that we're sinners and it's gone. It's awesome. It's good news. So, are you um, devoted to God? Do you love Jesus more? Um, are you looking for his return? <clears throat> See, these are traits of godly men and women. They, they love God. They're looking for his son's return. They're looking to serve him every day. A godly, devout man and woman wants to meet God and see him. Wow. And that was true of Simeon. Did you notice that Simeon said to Jesus that he would be the light to the Gentiles? Of all the various faiths, Christianity is the only one that provides prophecy and historical facts to authenticate the spiritual message that's there. There's no other sacred book to compare to it. The Bible is the light. Why? Because it's truth. It's truth. It happened. You know, there's... Ten copies of Plato that were written 500 years after Plato died, and there's 24,000 copies of the New Te parts of the New Testament that that were written 25 years after Jesus died. The evidence is overwhelming. And so Simeon found Jesus, and he held him, and he blessed him, just like we blessed Harper today. We 
spoke the word of God over her, we spoke prophecy over her, and we believe to see that come to fruition. That's why we videotape it now, so parents can take it and remind their child. I want you to think today, um, go back to every religious experience, every godly experience that you had, and see how God was preparing your life. Okay? See how God was preparing your life. Because God used words to create this world. And it, and it happened. And we use words. And, and the words we use, names are important. Names are really important. Simeon understood that the baby in his arms was the saviour of sinners. And he was also the king of kings. That every knee will bow. Every king's knee in this earth will bow. Every prime minister's knee will bow uh, to the king of kings when he comes. And that could be any moment the way things are happening in the Middle East. This was no ordinary baby. Uh, he would have been um, awesome to actually watch the face of Jesus' parents while Simeon blessed him. How did Joseph and Mary respond? What did they think of the blessing? And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him in verse 33. See, God was blessing and reassuring this couple one more time that this child was special. Uh, he was unique. Joseph needed to hear God's loving words again. Ah, my wife did tell me the truth. She didn't have an affair with someone else. This is God's baby. And Mary needed to be reassured also. But there was always a sting in the tail, wasn't there? Uh, then Simeon turned and he warned Mary. He must have been uh, up close and personal, looking at her face to face, looking into her eyes when he gave her this warning. And Simeon blessed her and um, he blessed them and said uh, to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be opposed and the sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. To the end that the thoughts of many hearts might be revealed. See, Jesus was going to be rejected by many and die a painful death. She didn't know that just yet. She would suffer greatly and, and all that came true um, when she stood at the foot of the cross some 33 years later, looking up at her firstborn dying. She didn't understand Simeon's words completely at the time, but she did on that day. And most of us understand these comments that he's made, except for the last one. <coughs> to the end that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What did Simeon mean? I can tell you what he means. If you don't love Jesus with all your heart, that will be revealed on the day of judgment. If you don't love Jesus with all your heart, that will be revealed on the day of judgment. See, Simeon wasn't just... <laughs> warning Mary about the tragedy, he was warning us. It's a real warning. And only we can respond to it. He's saying that the true motives and intentions of people's hearts toward Jesus would be revealed at the end. Yes, Jesus would have followers. Yes, many would be healed. His ministry, um, by his ministry, and rejoice in his teaching, and some would welcome him as king one day, and they'd lay down the palm trees and the leaves and branches and bless him and give him a mighty entrance into Jerusalem. But many of them would uh, not really care about Jesus. They would care about themselves, um, what they could get out of it. At the end of the, his life, um, they could just as easily um, ask for his death. They did on that day when it pleased them. They were heartless and unfaithful. But God in Christ loved us with an everlasting love and He provided a way for us to escape the penalty of sin. The older I get, the more I want to weep when I think of it. Jesus paid for my sin.
And yet there would be those like his mother and others, including the thief on the cross, who would want a saviour, who would uh, rescue them from their sins. They knew in their hearts who he was and they believed that he was the saviour of the world and he was the king. He is our king. See, so had, had Joseph and Mary asked God to encourage them, had they prayed a prayer, will you, you know, encourage us God, this journey is, a, is hard? Um, well, we don't know if they, if they did, but God planned to encourage them. Uh, both with Simeon, now a faithful, devout woman named Anna. She was 84 years old. Now, I had an 84-year-old angel come and give me some cakes in the middle of a service um, in the Sydney Cathedral. And I just prayed, Lord, I don't have any money I need to. I would love to eat tonight. And she gave me three big scones wrapped in... <laughs> Wrapped in um, grease paper. God, so good. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanil from the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years and had lived with her husband for seven years. So she only had seven years of married life. And then as a widow um, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, serving day and night with fasting and prayers. And that very moment she came and began to give thanks to God and continued to speak of him uh, to all those who look for the redemption of Jerusalem. See, we're told that she was from the tribe of Asher. Anna was dedicated to God. Um, we're told that she never left the temple. She was a prayer warrior. Probably few women committed to prayer um, than this godly woman. And somehow God told her that a Messiah was in the temple. And so she approached Jesus and she began to thank him. She knew the baby was her Messiah. Uh, she didn't know what she said. Um, we don't know what she said to Jesus' parents. But it would have been wonderful to have been there. You know, been a fly on the wall listening. And then Anna started telling everyone about the one she had waited for, her Messiah. So in conclusion, angels announced the conception. Uh, they gave Jesus a name. They appeared at his birth. They offered praise to God and the shepherds visited the baby. God in human flesh. Those are great cosmic birthday announcements. Aren't they? <laughs> the Holy Spirit spoke and Simeon honoured Jesus with praise and a mother's heart was warned about a sad day to come. See, the Holy Spirit helped an 84-year-old woman know that her Messiah had arrived and then she told everyone who would listen that the Messiah has come. See, why did God do this? Why did God speak to this group of shepherds, prophets, prophetess? Why? He did it for the shepherds. He did it for Simeon. He did it for Anna. He did it for Joseph and Mary. Because God cared about them. He cares about you and he cares about me. The God of the universe cares about us. And he took time and paid special attention to some longing hearts. Are your hearts longing after God today? Maybe they didn't realise it that, that their Messiah was God in flesh, but they would someday. And in the process, God revealed his heart. He revealed that he loves us, that he cares for us. He cares about the individual. He cares about um, the men, the women, the children. He loves the poor as well as the rich. And, and God has a compassionate heart. He granted an old man's request and ministered to an old woman's heart. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. The visit of the shepherds and the events with Simeon and Anna are not afterthought additions to the events surrounding the birth of Jesus. God, they reveal God's loving heart. And they point us to Jesus. Jesus is God's Messiah. Um, he was not just any normal human baby. Jesus is God who came in human flesh. Jesus is the Christ. There is no other. He is the Christ. There is no other. You know, a long service is not going to do it for us. Our insurance policies are not going to do it for us. One day, everything that we own will be taken away. And what will we have then? An eternity of what? Light. An eternity of light with Jesus. 
for an eternity of darkness because we refuse Jesus. We can um, gladly and willingly commit our children to God and especially help us today because we know that He loves us and He wants the best for our children. He has a perfect plan for our lives and their lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we, we just thank you for your love and forgiveness, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, that it's not of us. We can't boast about our salvation. You've done it all, and all we can do is take it and say thank you. So this morning, Lord Jesus, we just take once again that salvation that you've won for us in, in Jesus' name, and we say we believe it. We'll be blessed by it. And Father, as we partake of the food, we ask you to bless it to our bodies. And uh, bless those who help prepare it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.